guys, welcome back to another tech video. In this video, we will talk about the Keynote app for Mac OS. If you're new here and haven't followed this Facebook page or subscribed to our YouTube channel, don't forget to tap the follow button on Facebook and with the subscribe button on our YouTube channel to see more MCPL content. We bring you interesting tech videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Today's video is a part of the MacBook Pro Basics Skill Set Series. We explore the Mac operating system and apps that you're likely to use. Last time we kicked it off with parts one through four, exploring the hardware, basic navigation, the Finder app, Microsoft Office, Safari, and more. The next four parts of the Skill Set Series will focus on apps that have equivalents in Windows, such as Numbers, Keynote, and Pages. Then we will end the Skill Set skill set 8 about the mail app. So let's get started. To open Keynote, you'll click the Keynote icon in the dock, access it from the launch pad, or go to your applications folder. So you'll choose go in the menu, go down to applications, and then find the app. It is called Keynote and it has a blue logo with a podium in the center. Now if the theme chooser doesn't appear when you first open Keynote, you will see this dialog window where you can click New Document in the bottom left corner. And then the theme chooser will show thumbnails of the themes that you can use to create a new presentation. As a compatible partner to Microsoft PowerPoint, you can use Keynote to create beautiful and engaging presentations with fun animations, interesting transitions, and a professional polish. To create a Keynote presentation, you always start with a theme and then you'll modify it however you want. A theme is a set of pre-designed slide layouts that you can use as a starting point. Slides in a theme include a placeholder to images and text styled as headlines and body content. You can replace the theme's images and text with your own and then add more slides as needed. If you don't want to start with a theme, each slide you add to your presentation offers a different arrangement of text and images that you can use as a starting point. When you want to create a slide with particular elements, such as title and a subtitle, a bulleted list, or an image, you can select the slide layout that most resembles the look you want. Slide layouts contain placeholders for text and images, which you'll then replace with your own content. Now, since we're new to Keynote, let's take a look around, starting with the menu bar at the top of the screen. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of our MacBook journey, the menu bar will change depending on which app that you're using. So the options in the menu bar correspond to the app that's open and active. Now we don't have time of course to go through every single tab here in great detail, but I will highlight a few things that you may see in the menu bar. So starting with file, this is where you will of course open a new document, save the document that you're currently working on, move the document somewhere else, change the theme, or print the document. In the Edit tab, you'll have options to copy, cut, and paste, like usual. And then you'll also find your spelling and grammar option here, your transformation option, and then emojis and symbols. Those are usually there no matter which app you're in. In the Insert tab, you'll have options to incorporate tables, charts, text box, shapes, lines, images, um, web video, record audio, add formulas, and then choose content to incorporate. In the slide option in the menu bar, you'll have the options here to add a new slide, skip a slide, or show the slide numbers on all of the slides. In format, this is where you can customize your font, your text, the table, chart, shapes and lines, or images that you may add to your presentation. And then arrange will let you bring objects forward or bring them backward, align the objects, flip them, group them, or ungroup them. In the view option, you'll have the ability to show the navigator, navigator which is the bar on the left hand side that we'll talk about in just a moment. Show just the slide only. You can edit your slide layouts, show your rulers or guides. Um, check for comments that people may have left on particular slides or content. Show your arranged tools, adjust an image, show your warnings, enter full screen, or customize your toolbar. 
In the play option, this is where you will go to actually play your presentation. You can play it in full screen or in the window. You can record your slideshow, rehearse it, or customize your presenter display. Then you'll have share, which will let you send this presentation to others. Window, which will let you decide if it's tiled to the left, tiled to the right, zoomed in, if it's on a different display, etc. Now below the menu bar is your toolbar. The toolbar gives quick access to controls that you need as you work in Keynote. You can add, remove, or rearrange toolbar buttons to suit your style. So to do that, you'll visit the View tab in the menu bar and then click Customize Toolbar. You'll click and drag the icons you want in the toolbar. And then you'll have a grid of options such as Chart, Add Slide, Skip, Record, Flip Horizontal, Ungroup, Group, Copy Style, Paste Style, Print, Colors, Guide, Lock, Unlock, Fonts, and so forth. And then depending on which ones you want to move into or out of the toolbar, you'll click and drag those options to move them where you want them. If you want to reset your toolbar and put it back to the default, you'll click and drag the outline of the toolbar that's across the bottom of this dialog window and place it on top of the toolbar and it will reset it back to default. Once you're done with all of that, you will click done and enjoy your new toolbar. So that was the toolbar and the menu bar. These will be helpful when you need certain options to customize your presentation. So moving on, let's check out the sidebar, which is on the left side of your screen. This will make it easier to navigate your presentation, and you can open the sidebar on the left of the keynote window to view thumbnail images of the presentation slides or choose a destination from the view menu. The view menu will be to the left of the zoom in the upper left hand corner. So you can also use keyboard shortcuts to navigate through this presentation. So to open the slide from the slide navigator, you'll click the view icon and then choose navigator. You also have options here for slide only, light table, which is essentially slide sorter like in Microsoft PowerPoint, the outline view, edit your slide layouts, and then you have a few other options for rulers, comments, and presenter notes. So the slide navigator will appear on the left hand side of the current slide. The slide navigator will show thumbnails of the slides that make up your presentation and appears on the left side of the keynote window when you're in this view. You can click the thumbnails to jump to specific slides, drag them to reorganize your presentation, or press the down arrow and up arrow keys on your keyboard to view the previous or next slide. Now, if you want to add a slide, there are several ways to add slides to a presentation. You can add a new slide, duplicate existing slides, and add slides from another presentation in the slide navigator. So what you'll do is in your toolbar is you'll click the plus sign that says add slide and then select a slide layout. The new slide appears below the slide that's selected in the slide navigator. In the slide navigator, you can click the selected slide with the layout you want and then press the return key on your keyboard. A new slide will appear below that selected slide. So after adding a slide, you'll add your own content to it by using the rest of the options in your toolbar, such as adding a table, a chart, adding text, shapes, media, or comments, um, even photos and videos. So on the right hand side of the screen is your sidebar, which might look pretty familiar from the numbers video that we did previously. This will have tabs for formatting, animation, and document settings. For instance, you can also use the format section where it says slide to change your slide to a different slide layout, like the first slide, by clicking the slide layout button in the format sidebar on the right, and then selecting a different layout. So like I mentioned before, each slide layout offers a different arrangement of text and images that you can use as a starting point for your content. You will have a preview of what that slide looks like before you click on it. And each of them will have a different name depending on which one you're selecting. So, Let's insert some objects. You can add photos and graphics to any slide and replace media placeholders with your own images. You can add photos from a photo library 
drag them from a website or from Finder, or take a photo on a nearby iPhone or iPad and airdrop it into your Mac. Now, once you have an object in your workspace, which will be the center where you'll see the presentation title or presentation subtitle, depending on which layout you're using, you can crop that content, remove parts you don't want, and make adjustments to it in the background and exposure using the options available in your toolbar. Now, when you're ready, since you're probably using Keynote for animations and transitions, you can add animations to objects you've added to your slides. On the slide, you'll click to select the object that you want to animate. So the animate option is in the sidebar where you will click to the right of format. Your sidebar will change. Depending on what you've clicked on, you'll either see transitions or action. You'll have to select the correct object. And since we want to add animation to an object, we'll add an action in the action tab and then add an effect and then choose an animation. So to set your animation options, such as the duration and the direction of the animation, you'll use the controls that appear once you choose add an effect. To see how the animation looks, you can click preview. So let's walk through adding some animations in real time. So what you do is you want to make sure you select the items that you want, and I'm going to add another animation on top of what we've already added just a moment ago by clicking the Add Action button. And then each time I want to see what these particular actions do, I can click the Preview button to the right of each action. And in that way I can see what it does and how long it does it for and if I need to modify any of that in settings. Now you notice I selected all three of these objects. You do not have to. You can choose one at a time if you want to do it that way. But since I wanted them all doing the same thing, I chose all three. Now in the building tab, this is where you'll add its entrance effect. So that's kind of the equivalent of what it's called in uh, PowerPoint. With the red diamond, what you can do is this lets you quickly add another action and it will default to scale. You can change that by clicking on the plus sign that the diamond turns into and then choosing a different action from there. So this is what will happen if you want to add an action. This won't be the same as the entrance or the build-in. So whenever you click that diamond, it's going to add another action. But if you want to add an entrance effect, you want to go to the build-in tab. So here, since I'm clicking the diamond and playing around with adding multiple actions to each object, I'll click the red diamond. Now when I'm ready to add an entrance effect, I'll build that in by adding an effect and then previewing it. So you'll see I've selected one object because I want it to come in in a different style than the other objects. And here I'm going to go ahead and add another action for during the playback. That's different than the entrance. So I'm going to add a pulse to this one. And now it says multiple actions. And then I'm going to decide what I want it to do when it comes, when it needs to come into the slide. So here I can select the object, preview the action in the section and decide which one I think looks the most dramatic or something I haven't seen before. Now that one's cute. So if I choose this one and if I want to kind of modify it and instead of it coming in from the left, I want it to come in from the right, I can choose that and then preview to see if I like it. And then I can decide how long or if I need to add more actions. Now the build out will be the exit effect. So this is what will happen when the object leaves the slide. So I'm going to hit and show Shimmer because that one is pretty. Now you'll have this Build Order button in the bottom. This is the way you can see all of the action effects in the order that they will occur. You can click and drag these to organize them. You can change whether or not they start on click or after a transition or after a previous build. 
So you can see here I have seven builds, and a build is the action. And what I can do is since I want this particular object, all of its actions to happen one after another before it moves on to the next object, I can click and rearrange and set up when it can start. I can also add a delay if I want to, um, but I'm not going to do that right now. It's in seconds. Um, I can change any of that on the right hand side as well. And then I can even change the order of a build by selecting the drop down if I don't want to click and drag. So this tells you how many builds you have and what order that particular build is in. And so you can rearrange as you want. And so what I'm doing here is clicking and dragging so that way it'll start with Jupiter first and then go to Saturn and then the Moon. And you can move multiple builds at once. And then to the right of each of your builds it'll tell you the object and then it'll tell you what the action is on the right hand side. So you'll see it'll start with Anvil, then it'll jiggle, scale, then flip. Then move on to the next build, which for Saturn is drop, then it'll jiggle, then bounce. And then the moon, I want all of these to happen sequentially without me having to click on them, because I am terrible at remembering to click. And since these are just like introductory actions, I can go ahead and have them happen one after the other, and then they'll be finished up. So you'll see once you add the order of which they'll go and how they'll start, it kind of groups them together. And then any of them that you need to change, you can click on that build and rearrange it or even add extra actions and move them where you want them to go. But you'll have that entire build order for all of the objects you have actions added to. And once you're done with that, you can close it. And then you can click play to watch it through once you've added everything you're ready to add. Now, before you move on to adding your transitions, if you want a pretty easy way to see if you've added entrance, action, and exit effects to your object, when you click on the object, it'll tell you if there's any effects in that column on the sidebar. So we'll see that there's multiple actions. I can click show actions and it'll tell me what the actions are that are in this build. It'll show me that there's a build in action, but no build out. Here, same thing, no build out, but there is a build out on this one. So that's kind of a quick way to see whether or not you have all of the actions added that you want. Um, and even when you click in the build order, It'll change the sidebar too, like you might have noticed when I was demonstrating. And it'll show you what multiple actions are added in and whether or not there's a build in or build out based on what it shows you in the sidebar. So then you can just go through and do all of that for any of the objects that you need. Now, when you're ready to add your transitions, what you'll do is when you're on a slide, so this one already has a transition, and so do all of these. You'll notice that by the blue kind of triangle in the bottom right corner of each slide, that there's already a transition added to those. Now, if you want to change the transition, once you've added it, you can click change and preview depending on what you're doing, but if you want to add one, I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to duplicate this slide. Well, no, let's add a slide. Let's, we want it to be new. And we'll make it a quote photo for now. OK. Now, when you come in to your slide, you'll have no effects, and it'll automatically be set ready for transitions. And since I don't have any objects that I want to click on, it won't have me add any object animations yet. So you'll already have the transitions section up and ready for what you want to happen when this slide exits the slideshow. 
So I can click add an effect and then choose from the list. And then there will be the preview button on the right hand side of each of them. So you can see them. And then twist is kind of cool. And then there's magic move. So there's quite a few depending on how dramatic you want them to be. And you can make them the same for each of your slides or by just duplicating your slide or just choosing the same one for each of them for consistency. But I'm pretty dramatic, so sometimes I really like the bold, obnoxious ones. So let's see. Ooh, flop. Okay. So I chose flop for the transition. I can choose the direction and the duration. So it's only one second long, but if I make it two seconds long, I can choose the direction because right now it's set from top to bottom. Let's do right to left, see what that looks like. And then preview. It looks like a book. And then I can choose the when it'll start, either on click or automatically. But if I want to change, because I'm like, hmm, not quite sure how I feel about that. It feels a little slow, because usually the higher you go, the slower the transition will be. And I'm not that dramatic, so we can just go back down to one. Here we go. And if I don't like it, I can change it and do something else. Um, shimmer, where have you been all my life? Sparkle, swing. I like swap, there we go. And since it's at the end, it doesn't make sense. So if I move this one up here and I click play, when I'm ready to go to the next one, it'll swap. And then that one has its own transition. So you'll notice this one's swap, this one's iris, and it gives you like a little preview of kind of what it'll do on the slide. I think I made most of these iris because most of them were just duplicates. Well, this one's moving. And then reveal, and then preview, and go from there. So those are your animations and your transitions. Now in document, this will let you change your theme or your slideshow settings, or you can have it automatically play upon open, loop, or restart if it goes idle for at least 15 minutes. You'll just check those, and then you can click change theme to choose a different theme. So what that'll do is it'll change it for all of it. And depending on what you have set up, it's going to blow up your colors. But, you know, depending on what you're doing, you can go back to what you had as before. Now, when you're ready to play your presentation or play it back to review your animations and your transitions or anything of that nature, you can click the play button in the play or in the toolbar. This will just play it from wherever you're selected at the moment. So right now I'm at slide seven. So if I click play right now, it'll start at seven and go to the end. If you want to do some configuring before that, make this full screen. You'll want to visit the menu bar and click play. And this will give you the slideshow options to either play the slideshow choose whether or not it's playing in full screen or it plays in the window. This will kind of determine where your presenter notes and what windows you'll see as the slideshow is playing. You can record the slideshow, rehearse it, or customize the presenter display. So if we go to customize the presenter display, as you will see the configure option. So you'll have your slideshow on, I, so I'm hooked up to three monitors. On the left monitor will be the slideshow, 
the current monitor we're looking at now will just show my presenter notes and then the monitor on the right will be the presenter display but if I wanted to switch that because say maybe my audience is over here I can click configure have it show the slideshow on that screen where it says slideshow keep my presenter notes here and then have my presenter display on the left so I can see what's coming up I can organize it that way as well so that's what happens when you click on configure presenter display now once you have your setup configured, you can either click play in the toolbar or return to the menu bar to do some more configurations. Just like it says in that play option in the menu bar, in full screen will play your slideshow in full screen. You'll, your presenter display will be full screen and any presenter notes you have will be full screen. If you decide to do in window, because maybe you'll be doing some navigating outside of Keynote, you can choose in window. And then when it plays, oops, I'll go back to the beginning because I'm at the end. There we go. And then when it plays, you see it has its own window now that I can move somewhere else. Um, or pop out the navigator panel on the left hand side, pop out the presenter navigator which will show you all the slides, it'll show you what slide you're on, what's coming up, any notes for that slide will be underneath there, and then you'll have like your time recorder letting you know how much time you've been on what slide. So you can kind of customize a little bit of that in the window depending on what you need to view so that is your option when you're ready to play it now when you're ready to send it on to someone um, or have someone view it for you if you need to send the file you can click share in the menu bar and choose send a copy. This will let you send it via mail, messenger, airdrop, notes, or add this presentation to photos. Now, if you need to send it to someone who's using different software from you, just like you would in um, numbers, you'll want to export the file by going to file, export to, and then choose PowerPoint or a PDF, depending on what software that person is using. So if I click PowerPoint, it'll let me export this presentation as a PowerPoint. And if I need to choose an older format, I can choose that in the drop down next to format. Choose next. And then it's going to ask me where to save it so that way I can then send it. And then I would just export it from there. And then it will open as a leave it as untitled. It'll create the PowerPoint file. Let's minimize this so I can show you what it looks like. And there we go. So your transitions will export over. I'm sure any animations I may have will appear as well. and then that person is able to open the file and view it. So that's what I have for you. Thanks for joining me today as we talked about Keynote, the equivalent to PowerPoint. Have a good day. And we want to thank you for watching. Follow us to find more videos just like this. Our page on Facebook is MCPL360. We're here every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you miss us on Facebook, you'll still find these same videos on our YouTube channel at MCPL Mo. Find our consumer technology playlist. Have a good day.